All right. In this video, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to upload your assignments through the IONET portal. So if you are looking for the other features in the portal, there's a separate video for that that I had to split due to time restrictions, but also because not everyone will need to upload through the portal. So portal uploads will primarily be done by property appraisers and appraisers who are using an estimating platform other than CCC, such as Mitchell or Auditex. Um, there will still be some setup required for Mitchell and Autotex for the export paths that will be one-on-one. -on -one. I can't record a video for those because there's a lot more variables to that. But for property assignments and at least the how-to of what you will do to upload those once those paths are set, you can use this video as a guide. And I'll point out the one difference that will be specifically for property and HE, which is going to be your time and expense. So first thing we'll do is we'll go to ianetwork.net and we want to make sure that we are in a Microsoft Edge. So the upload tool that we use called File Connect will only run from Microsoft Edge. So it's important that we make sure we are logged in there. Once you're in Edge, you can go ahead and click Login. And that'll take you to this beautiful login page right here. Then you can go ahead and sign in with your credentials. So these are going to be different than your estimating platform credentials. So if you have a CCC license from INET, it's not going to be that one. And if you have a login for whatever estimating platform you do use, it's also not going to be that one. It's going to be specific to the portal. So those will come from vendor services. If you haven't gotten that, please reach out to them and they'll get you those credentials but if you do have them you can go and enter them and then hit sign in that'll take you to the dashboard here we're going to go to our work list to access our active assignments so if you're uploading something regardless of whether it's in work list or waiting items it is going to function the same you'll just access it from the different queue depending on where the file is at most of the time it's going to be from your work list. But if you do get something in waiting items, you need to upload an additional document, make a change, whatever it may be, it'll work the same. You'll just access it from your waiting items queue. So go ahead and locate the assignment you want to upload, and then we're going to hit this blue upload button here, and that's going to launch the upload process. So I've set this one up as a property assignment just to show you the full process here. So normally you won't have an EMS present. It's going to be empty. This, like I said, was, is a test file, so things are a little different here. Um, but for property assignments, you're actually just going to go ahead and skip this step and go to upload image and documents. So from here, regardless of whether you're doing property, auto, etc., it's actually it's going to be the same thing. So we're going to hit upload image and document and then hit open. If you're doing auto, when you hit upload EMS, it's going to do the same thing. It's going to try to launch File Connect. The difference is the File Connect view you'll see from Upload EMS. It's going to be for the EMS, whereas the, the File Connect view you see for Image and Documents is going to be slightly different. But the first time you log into the portal and you try to launch File Connect, if it's not installed, which it won't be the first time, it's going to prompt you to install it. So we're going to go ahead and hit Install. And you're going to get this progress bar here that usually goes pretty fast, but can take a little longer sometimes. And then once that's done, you should get a few more prompts. So I don't know if the video recorder will grab it, but you're going to get one that says, do you want to allow this app from an unknown publisher to make changes to your device? We're the publisher, INET. The app is File Connect. You're going to want to hit yes. Sometimes so you're going to get this prompt that says Windows protected your PC. You're only going to have an option of more info and don't run. So you'll click on more info that's underlined. And then in the next window, or the ch after the change it makes, you can hit run anyway. And then that'll take, take you, it should take you to the final screen. You may have another one for the certificate install. You'll just hit yes to install the certificate. That's what's going to authenticate the upload into our server. Um, and then once you're done with all of the prompts, you'll get this INET image uploader screen. So the way that it works for attachments is it's going to take you to this default folder that's created on install. That's in your C drive, in the INET folder, and the folder called image. You're definitely not going to have anything in there since this folder wasn't there before we installed File Connect. You can use it as your default upload location if you want, but you don't have to. If you want to upload from anywhere else, you can hit Change Directory. That'll allow you to go into this fo folder browser, and you can expand your PC directories and go to your documents, photos, wherever you want to put your files. For me, I'm going to use this Saved Pictures folder that I should have on my desktop. 
Oh, so that's my directories. If I expand my desktop now, there it is, save pictures. So I have a few beautiful landscapes here. And you can see that it's kind of chunking <laughs> to go through those 239 files. The way it works is it looks through, creates this preview for each image. So that's actually one thing I want to point out, and this does apply to EMS uploads also, is that we don't want to navigate to a folder with more than, say, 300 files in it. Um, typically, it's pretty instant if it's less than 100. Over 100, you can start seeing that progress bar take longer and longer. So it took a few seconds for me to get into this folder. The more files you have, the longer it takes. I have seen a few appraisers machines where they have three, 4,000 files in it, and it takes a few minutes to get to this point where you can select a file. So it's important that whatever directory you do choose to use, you want to keep that to a lower file count. Uh, if you have subfolders in there, then those will not be looked at for this preview, so that's a good option is if you have a lot of files in there, throw them in another folder or create a folder in your main folder, dump those files in there, and then you can upload from the root of the folder. It's really up to you what you want your process to be, but just keep in mind that you don't want to tell File Connect to go to a folder that has lots of files in it. You want it to be under 300 for your sanity, so you're not sitting there staring at a progress bar for so long. Once you're in the right folder that you want, you should be able to see all of your files previewed here. You can select all to select all of them. I don't want to upload all of them, so I'm going to select, let's say, this is 12 here. Um, and then PDF documents will just be the same thing. If they're in the same folder as images, you'll select them just as you will your images and upload them all together. And then once you've got them all selected, you'll hit upload. File Connect will start doing its thing. Similar to how it takes longer to load, it's going to take longer to upload depending on size and how many files you have. So I only uploaded 12, and they're fairly small images, so it didn't take very long. One other thing to keep in mind is there is a 10 megabyte upload limit for all individual attachments. So if you have a photo sheet that's very common for property files, we're gonna to need to keep that size under 10 megabytes, otherwise it will cause errors. So if you need to split your photos off from your estimate, that's fine. Um, we prefer individual photos. I understand a lot of um, estimating platforms for property, combine them before you create your final estimate. But regard, if that's the way you want to do it, we need to make sure that file size is down. If you need to split it into parts, where it's you know, estimate or completed report part one, part two, maybe even part three, that's fine, but we need to keep each part under 10 megabytes. And the other thing I want to point out is the file naming. So if you're doing auto or heavy equipment especially, you may print off pages from a website. I'm sure property, you may still do that too. But if you use the default name for certain applications for the file where it just uses the website address as the file name. Oftentimes the file name will be too long and File Connect can't read the file. And that'll cause an error and it won't allow you to upload it. So all you have to do is just rename it something shorter. If you're trying to print an NADA page, just instead of www. you know, whatever the address is and then all the long names, just change it to NADA. Or owner's name, NADA, or vehicle entity, whatever. Um, same thing with whatever property files. If you're pulling some information off a website and it's too long, shorten it down, make it concise, and you, that should avoid some of the common issues. Once everything's done, you can go ahead and hit OK on your confirmation pop-up. This page doesn't refresh when you hit OK. File Connect doesn't send a command back to the browser, so we have this refresh button here. Once you press that, then you should be able to see everything you uploaded. I have never seen where some we get confirmation on an upload and then after refreshing it's not there. The only time that can happen is if you delete a file and then try to re-upload it without changing the file name. It, our system for whatever reason will not accept it because it's already been uploaded and deleted. Um, you'll get confirmation through File Connect but it won't show up here and we won't actually get the file again. So if you've already uploaded and for whatever reason you delete it or delete it all or whatever happened, change the names. You can just label them one through whatever or add a number to the end or whatever it is um, and then re-upload it and we should have them. But you can verify everything here. If you're doing photos for auto, you can go ahead and label them here. So, you know, right front, whatever. Um, say this one's the VIN, 
obviously these are not, but you know, just for example's sake. And then you want to make sure that you hit save. So save is going to be for the uh, descriptions. Alternatively, you can just hit save all at the bottom, and that'll save all the descriptions. Um, if you don't have any descriptions, you can just view it, make sure everything's good, and then we can move on to the next step. So the summary report is going to be required for all assignments other than CCC assignments. CCC gets an extra integration through there where we get the summary report directly from the data in CCC, but for anything manually done through the portal, obviously we don't, so those are going to be the ones where this is needed. The required fields are the boxes marked with an asterisk. You don't have to fill out every single box, but if you want to cheat a little bit, you can try to go to the next step and it won't let you, and then it's going to go ahead and mark all the bo all the required boxes with red. Um, the only one that's a little different is the location email address. So before you put one in, let's say the shop or location doesn't have an email, you can choose a reason from no email reason, including other, and then you can put something like NA, but if you do actually just type in an email here, it's going to go ahead and remove the no email reason. So it just disappeared. So that's the only one that's a little odd. Everything else is pretty straightforward. You just select something uh, later, data dispatch. I don't know why it took me back to 22. Damage is consistent with facts of loss. Yes, days to repair, that's going to be for I don't know why days to repair is included on a property summary. I believe m most of this is the same info. Not all of it will apply to a property assignment. Obviously, you can't drive a property, so you can just select unknown. Basically, to the best of your well, we don't actually no copy give note. To the best of your ability, just go ahead and fill this out. If it doesn't apply to property, then just go ahead and put something in. Obviously, these are not areas of damage for a property, so. Um, all over, doesn't matter. We're only going to pay attention to the ones that are specific to a property assignment and then your notes down here. So, inspection completed. If I could spell it, probably help without issue. And save report. So, it'll think for a little bit and then we should get our confirmation pop up on the bottom right in a moment. I'm actually going to go and expand this. It's been a little small for the video. Sorry about that. So we did get our green pop-up there. Now if we try to go to the next step, it's going to let us. This one is time and expense. So what what time and expense is, is it's for property or HE or specialty. Standard Auto will not use this since it's a base damage report fee. But for time and expense, the way it works is you'll choose when you worked on the file. So let's say on Monday, I spent point. 0 0.5, it has to be whole numbers, spent that time researching something, <laughs> and then I can go and add that. And then let's say on Tuesday I spent one hour inspecting, I can add that, and then let's say also on Tuesday I spent you know, 0 0.75 hours writing report, add that. Let's say after that I realized I needed to do some research for damages, calling shops, vendors, whatever. Another half hour. Uh, not 0.54, just 0.5. Add that. And then it'll give you the total down here and you can hit save once you have all your items in. And same thing, it'll think for a bit and we should get our confirmation pop up shortly, just like that. Then we can go ahead and go to the next step. So this is the hardest step of all of them. Complete and notify. <laughs> all you have to do is hit complete and notify uh, and that will complete it. So similar to how the photos upload worked, it doesn't refresh right away. We need to go and hit refresh up here. Then we're good to go. And you can see that that file got removed from my queue. It's now going to be in the completed queue um, where Hopefully it will stay. Actually, it went to audit, so it's not going to show incompleted. If you do need to add anything additional, you can search the file number, and it'll come up that way. So if you need it to add anything additional, you can do that. Um, this one may have not gone to standard audit. I think it may have gone to auto audit, which removes it from appraiser's view, so things don't get interrupted during that process since it's automated. Um, you can also just call our customer service team, and we can change the file status, put it back to in progress, whatever we need to do at the moment. But that's it for the uploads. I'll put the contact information for the different departments up on the screen. Um, hopefully you've watched any other appropriate training videos and you're all set. Thank you.